Well, hello, hello, beautiful kindred spirits. Today I'm going to show you my secret to making the lightest, fluffiest southern biscuits. Is the secret ingredient lard? No. Is it southern flour? No. Is it milk or buttermilk? No. Stick around and I'll show you. Okay, guys, I'm really excited about this because you can do this. It's really, really easy. So all you need are three ingredients to make your biscuits. You're going to need some self-rising flour. Now, I like to use white lily flour. It's from Knoxville, Tennessee. Martha White flour is also really good. And just a good southern flour. If you don't have a southern flour in your area, don't worry about it. Just make sure it is self-rising flour. The second thing you're going to need is some lard. Lard to me makes a much better biscuit than vegetable shortening. There's a lot of reasons that I like this. We can talk about that another time if you're interested, but I like to use lard. And then the third thing I use is just regular old milk. Use full fat milk if you can. Don't use skim milk. Use the full fat because having that extra fat in the biscuits is going to help them taste so much better. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna measure out our lard. And I've already cut it off. It comes in a little block like this. And you're gonna need a quarter of a cup of lard. So I'm gonna put that into my mixing bowl here. Just like that. Now, to that lard, we're going to be adding two cups of flour and we're gonna sift our flour and... Have y'all ever seen a sifter like that? This was my mother's and it is old and I love it. And every time I hear those sounds, it reminds me of get out two cups of flour. So there's one cup. I'm going to send it through the sifter. All right. Here's our second cup. you when we made the strawberry jam start with a clean kitchen because if your kitchen is already messy this is a very messy job anyway and it's just going to double your mess so make sure your kitchen is nice and clean before you get started and then what we're going to do now we're not going to add our milk yet because I'm going to show you what we're going to do you can go ahead and get your milk poured we're using three quarters of a cup of milk I'm gonna pour that and just set it aside right now. Because what we're gonna do, your hands are the best kitchen tool you have for most things. So I have clean hands. I'm gonna use my hands to mix together this lard and this flour. And you're not just mixing, you're actually taking your hands and you're mixing together the pieces of lard with that flour. And you want this mixture, when you're done, to resemble sort of a coarse cornmeal look because you want all those little globs of lard to be covered with flour. So you're not just merely mixing it like you'd mix a cake, you are actually giving everything a good squeeze. That warmth from your hands is gonna help melt your lard. And it's gonna help that little bit of flour attached to all those little lard pieces at the same time too. Very therapeutic to do this. Good for your biceps. Now these biscuits probably aren't real good for your waistline, but that's okay. If you just eat them on occasion, you'll be 
Now you can see it's a very different texture than it was when we started out with the flower. Now, let me move these things aside because I'm going to show you something else right quick. Okay, so you want to have everything ready to go when you're making your biscuits. So I already have my little place where I'm going to be patting out my biscuits. And I also have a pan to bake my biscuits on. And I have a rolling pin and a biscuit cutter. You don't need to go out and buy a special biscuit cutter to do this. You can use a cookie cutter that's round or uh, even a glass. If you have a glass or a cup that's about this size, you can use that. My mother always used a Tupperware plastic cup to, to cut her biscuits out. These are extra special because they belong to my grandmother. Have you ever seen a one-handled rolling pin? I've never seen one of those before, but it looks more like a baseball bat. But, and this was her biscuit cutter. That was the same grandmother who made my bonnet for me, and I talk about in, in several other videos because she taught me how to sew. Okay, so we have everything set up and ready to go. This is the secret to making light and fluffy biscuits. We have our flour and our lard mixture, then we have our milk. We're going to slowly add our milk in to our flour and lard mixture. Give it a stir, just a gentle stir to get everything mixed. Just like that. And the secret <laughs> isn't an ingredient. It's just in the handling of the dough. So you can see everything's just been very lightly mixed together. That's all we're really gonna do. We're not going to, we're not making bread. So you're not going to knead it. When you're kneading bread, you are trying to work gluten out of it or into it, into the wheat so that you have a nice rise and chewy texture of your bread. With biscuits, you work it much lighter with a much lighter hand. And that's the secret to having really light and fluffy biscuits is you don't overwork your dough. So now I'm gonna take a little bit more flour and sprinkle it out here on the surface. And then I'm gonna dig out our biscuit dough. Just plop it right there on top of that flour. Now, you're going to get flour. I put flour down on the surface so my dough wouldn't stick. I'm also going to flour my rolling pin so that the dough doesn't stick to it. And then we'll put a little bit of extra flour right up here. And you're just going to take your rolling pin and gently, gently roll that dough out. Be very gentle. Almost, almost think about it as, as working with an egg and you don't want to break that egg. So you want to be real gentle with your biscuit dough. So you're not going to mash, you're going to just gentle it out just like this. All right. now. That dough is probably a quarter of an inch high. So I'm gonna leave it at that. And I'm gonna put a little bit of flour on my biscuit cutter and I'm just gonna go just like that. And there's my first biscuit. And I've got my pan ready. So I'm gonna stick that right there in the center. I'm gonna go around and stamp out the rest of them. Now let me show you about this placement here. If you separate all your biscuits, every biscuit will have a crumb around the edges. But if you want a softer edge, you can put your biscuits all together and all of the edges will be softer and fluffier on the edges.
pages. So that's that's according to what you like better. You don't have to do them how I do mine because you might like those edges that are crunchy all the way around. But keep that in mind when you're placing your biscuits in your pan. And you may have to keep going back and reflowering your cutter because if you don't, your flour, your biscuit dough will stick. So once you've got some of the biscuits cut out, you're gonna have to bring your dough back together and just gentle, gentle it around. Put just some more flour on your rolling pin and gentle it back into a flat shape so you can cut out more biscuits. Just like that. When I was little, I think we had biscuits for every meal. <laughs> biscuits, beans, and potatoes were a staple at my house. And so my mother would always let me make a snowman out of the, the remainder of the flour. So I always thought it was a treat to bake up that little snowman biscuit. So this has probably got one more left. I'll put her right there, and then we'll, we'll, we'll fashion this up a little snowman. Why not? Every biscuit tray's got to have a snowman in it. Try if you can. It's not completely necessary, but try if you can to make your snowman the same width as the rest of the biscuits otherwise your snowman will be burnt most snowmen are so it's not that big of a deal if it is but and now you're going to bake these biscuits in an oven set to 475 degrees and you're going to bake them for eight to ten minutes just kind of depending on your oven keep your keep an eye on them because you can burn them if your if your temperature isn't set correctly in your oven. All right, guys, our biscuits have just come out of the oven, and I want you to look at how delicious they look. Let me show you something. Remember when I told you about the placement of your biscuits makes a difference? These this biscuit was placed all by itself, and you can see how it's got crispy edges, and then this one was placed in the center, and it had biscuits surrounding it, so it's just going to make for a, a fluffier crumb, but look at how fluffy and delicious. I don't know if you can see the steam coming off of that. You probably can't, but this is... Mm, mm. That is so good, and I'm telling you, the lard makes the difference. Y'all remember the jam we made a couple of weeks ago? Make you up some good homemade strawberry jam or the jam of your choice and then put some butter on those hot biscuits and then that jam and you are in for a treat. I also love to make homemade biscuits to make my strawberry shortcake with. All I do is I make a big old biscuit and I bake it, then I split it. Kind of think of it as a big cake I put butter on the inside of it, and then I cut up my strawberries, mix it with a little bit of sugar and vanilla flavoring, and then mash them just ever so gently. Put those on the inside of that big old biscuit, and then cover it with some homemade whipped cream. You talk about the best strawberry shortcake. It is divine. Thank you so much for watching, my friends. I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye. My daughter walked by and said, I love your insect that you made. It does look like a caterpillar and not a snowman.